Welcome to What's New with AWS. I'm Jeff Barr. Before we dive in, I want to thank you for all your great feedback, your comments, and your likes. This week, I've got another story for you and three great launches. I'm often asked how I came to join Amazon, and I think it's a pretty interesting and unique story, and I'd love to share it with you. So years and years ago, I had been explaining the ideas of platforms and APIs to, to anyone who'd listen. I was really early into web services, first at Microsoft and then as a consultant. I was doing great as a consultant. I was earning lots and lots of money, getting to do all different kinds of projects, did work in C and Java, and even Perl if I have to. Now, if you think back two decades or so, think back to these really early web services, these really messy and hard to use kind of prototypes of where we are today. Corba and UDDI and WSDL and XML RPC. Super early, not awesome, but it got us to where we are. To me, the important thing was the concept. You could connect to a service remotely, you could make stuff happen. Now, thinking as a developer, this was really, really powerful. I, I got it kind of at the bits and bytes data flow level, but then I'd often show it to a business person or an investor. They'd look at it and like, uh, I don't get it. I, I don't really understand the value of what you're talking about. Now, looking back, it was really clear there were a lot of tools, but the, the tech wasn't quite there. The industry wasn't quite there. But I really thought if developers had access to this, they could build some really amazing things and that they could really just do some awesome work with it. And I was really thinking, like, what can I do to help this get to the, the mainstream? Now, I was mostly focused on the client side and got to say that the really early web services that we could get to, they, they really didn't help the cause at all. We were kind of like some stock quotes and some weather and currency conversion just literally makes me yawn even just thinking about it. With, with apologies to those who created it, not super, super inspiring. I was already aware of the Amazon Associates program. Uh, as a quick reminder, this was one of the, the first affiliate programs where you'd sign up for the program and you'd, you'd get some special links, you'd build websites, you'd send traffic to Amazon, and you could actually earn commissions on the traffic that you, that you sent to Amazon that resulted in purchases. So people love this, was a great way to create businesses around your, your website. So, so one day, I signed into my Amazon Associates account and there's this little box on the side. Four really magic words were in there, turns out. It said, Amazon now supports XML. My mind lights up a little bit because I knew what that was all about. And I, I look, through, look in a little bit closer. I, I click through and I suddenly realized that this web services future that I've been thinking about is it, actually happening. And I got to grab hold and I got to just go for it. And... Thinking back on that, that tiny little box, and I, I sure wish I actually had a screenshot of it because that, that little box was my actual, like, my, my wormhole portal gateway to the, the future. So I did what I really felt I had to do. I, I pulled my spacesuit on. I jumped through that box just head first. And what did I find there in that new world? Well, Amazon had built programmatic access to the Amazon product catalog. This was like, as I read through, it was like, wow, this is like so awesome. There's this really rich data schema. There's a, a business model that makes sense for both the producer and the consumer. And after all these years of showing and talking about all these kind of like not super compelling, not amazing web services that only geeks will get, I've actually got this genuinely useful web service. I, I'm, so, I'm so just like so excited. Like this is the thing I've been waiting for for years and years and years. My, my heart is racing. I, I sign up. I download the SDK. I start just, I put a little bit of my consulting aside. I, I built a library. I built some tools. I'm telling all my, my techie friends about this. I'm, I'm just so jazzed about this. It's like so cool. I, I capture all my feedback in a, an email to Amazon, it, but not just kind of literal tech feedback. I, I try my best to just actually convey my enthusiasm for how awesome I thought this was. Well, the, the feedback actually met with some receptive ears at Amazon headquarters. And this guy, Bill, actually invited me over to the office to, to learn some more. We had some great chats. We, we kept in touch. And then Bill invited me to what he said was a, a developer conference built around web services. I was super excited about this. I, I then learned it was actually kind of small with just five developers invited, but that's okay. Sound, sounds interesting to me. I, I show up at Amazon's 
kind of now legendary PacMed building on, on conference day. And I'm really excited to kind of hear where the company's at and where they're going. Uh, kind of a, a bit of an aside, at, at this point, I mostly think of, as, as does the rest of the world, they, they think of Amazon as, as a bookstore. But, but nevertheless, here I am at the headquarters of the, the bookstore, and I'm listening to really all this really interesting just tech stuff. And they're talking about how cool this first web service was. And at some point during the day, one of the speakers gets up and they say, we're so impressed with this initial service. We published it and developers found it and started putting it to use right away and emailing us. And I'm thinking, oh, that was, that was me, actually. And they're saying, based on how well all this has gone, we're going to think about finding and publishing some more services. Now, my background at Microsoft with APIs and developer tools, all of a sudden I'm thinking, oh my gosh, like this is it. Like Amazon.com is suddenly this developer thing. My, my brain explodes and the light bulb goes on and I'm thinking I'm like flying through that wormhole into the future all of a sudden. And it's just like, this is like this chance I've, I've been preparing for and waiting for and looking for this moment. And like, this is like the chance for this like bold action and I am not going to miss it. But on the other hand, I, I look to the left where there's two other, other guests. I look to the right where there's another two guests. They didn't actually grasp the significance of what they just heard, but I was really, really sure that I had just heard something that was just like, that, that was just like pointing me toward the, the, the future and, and not just the future, but, but my future. So like, here I am, I'm right there at the, the three-way intersection of preparation and opportunity and desire. I, I'm, I'm just, I'm just so excited. And I, I turned to the, the, at the next break, I turned to go and talk to Sarah Spillman, who had invited me. And I tell Sarah, I say, Sarah, I'm not quite sure what's here, but I need to be a part of this. She replies right away and she says, yep, Jeff, we, we, we hope that we would actually do some recruiting here and we can make that happen. I'm, I'm super, super psyched about this. And before long, an interview is scheduled. And I'm thinking, hmm, I, I can actually now be a part of some legitimate web services effort. I, I start to get ready. I do my research. I find that at this point, Amazon is now a, a kind of a Perl intensive, Perl centric shop. And I, I realize that I've now learned, used, and done my best to forget all my Perl twice in my career. And now I got to do it a third time, but okay. I'm going to learn it again and do whatever it takes. So learn it once again for my, my third time. I study, I prepare, I practice. I got one shot. I got to hit my target. I'm super, super excited. I'm really just jazzed about this. I'm, I'm, I'm doing all my consulting, but I'm just really thinking about this really interesting potential future. And then I have a quick chat with my financial advisor and tell him all about how excited about this. And he looks at me with like, Jeff, 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 Jeff. He's like, Amazon.com? You know that was labeled Amazon.bomb just a year or two ago and that Barron's and the entire like financial industry has given up on the company. And with that, it's like strike one. Like, what am I doing here? go to another friend and I hope that he's going to be maybe a little, little bit more sympathetic and understanding. He listens really carefully. He's like, oh yeah, Amazon, the, the bookstore. So are you going to be working in a, in a warehouse? Well, that's, that's not going to fly. And it's like getting really hard to actually explain what I'm going to do. And so I'll just kind of like let that go. But, but there's, there's strike two. And then I start chatting a bit, just kind of tentatively and carefully with a couple of my consulting clients and explain that, that I'm exploring this web services opportunity, Amazon. They're not having it. We're like, Jeff, we're, we're paying you all this, this like great consulting money. And now you're going to just desert us and go work for a, a bookstore. Are you mad? At, at this point, it's like strike three. And I'm, I'm really starting to just wonder a little bit, like, what to me is this like really auspicious opportunity is nobody else is actually seeing this. And I'm thinking, well, am I giving up this like really just lucrative and, and pleasant consult consulting practice to join what some people are saying, this is actually like a, a, a failing company. It, it's getting close to, to interview time. I'm, I'm just about prepped. I'm, I'm, I'm at my home office desk. I, I see a, a picture of my, my kids on my desk, my, my oldest son, Stephen. He's just uh, he's getting ready to, to start college at this point. And we've got four other that are going to start soon after that. Now, when I think college, 
I partly think education, but I also think, you know what, piles and piles and piles of, of $100 bills. Now, I, I wasn't lucky enough to, to be able to go to college full time. And I was, my plan, my entire time of my raising my family was, I'm going to make sure that they're all going to college, no matter what it takes to make that happen. So I'm thinking that consulting is going to be able to pay these, this tuition, but is Amazon? I, I really don't know. I, I'm still kind of unsure and kind of thinking, well, I, I see this, but somehow nobody else does. And maybe I'm, maybe I'm delusional and maybe I'm not. I'm not quite sure at this point, but I, I do reassure myself. I, I can always go back to consulting if it, if it doesn't work out. I check in with my family, tell them a bit about this, and I get a ton of reassurance, actually. We, we've got this great phrase in my family as we support each other, and we, we always say that we've got each other's back. And they, I tell them a little bit about how excited I am about this, and they, they say, Dad, we got your back. You, you should go ahead. You need to do that. I, I'm more psyched than ever. I'm getting kind of convinced that I should, should do this. I, I study that pearl some more. I, I'm ready. I'm, I'm going to make this happen. I show up at, at PacMed once again. I spend an entire day going through the interview process, all that prep, all that pearl, all the C. I'm up at the, the board. I'm writing code, binary search, string compare, database lookup, got it all under control, ace the entire interview. And I'm thinking I'm, I can actually be corporate again. And I'm super, now, now I've, I've kind of gotten past those doubts. I'm, I'm now actually really anxious to be part of, of this team. And I'm not quite sure exactly what team I'm, I'm going to be part of, but I want to be part of it nevertheless. I get the offer letter, and I'm going to actually be part of this. I, I read through the offer. It's awesome. I take it, and I'm now a, a senior developer on the Amazon Associates team. And believe it or not, I end up initially writing some reports in my old nemesis, Perl. At this point, I'm on board. I'm very, very close to the web services team. They're actually just a hallway away from me. I'm ever so close. But I dive right in. The rest is actually history, and I'll save some of that for another story or two. My lessons for you today, it is great to be early, but you got to be patient. you got to look for every opportunity. Take that opportunity when it's there, even if it's not exactly a perfect match. If it's going to get you closer, take it. And maybe learn Perl, maybe don't learn Perl. Well, that's my story for you today. Our first launch is general availability, which we sometimes call GA, of the Amazon Location Service. I first wrote about this in December 2020 when we launched the preview. And as I shared with you at the time, our goal is to make it even easier for you to add location-based features to your apps. So Location Service is now generally available. It's got a really important set of resources you should know about. There are maps at up to 16 zoom levels provided by both Esri and Here Technologies. As part of GA, we now added satellite imagery. There are place resources. These are kind of neat because you can do geocoding and you can find points of interest. We added routes so you can compute driving distances, directions, and estimated time of arrival. And then two cool things you can use together. There's trackers and geofences. The trackers will let you track positions of devices, and then geofences let you monitor the trackers versus a geographical boundary. You then can get alerts when the tracker goes into or exits that boundary. The routing is new for GA, and I think it's really cool and really powerful. You can set up up to 25 waypoints, and then routing will optimize based on your specified departure time and your travel mode for cars, for trucks, or for walking. All these features are really easy to use, and you can explore them from the console. My challenge for you, take a look at this, build something really, really cool, and share it with me. If you'd like to learn more about the location service and see it in action, you can check out Marcia's blog post. Our second launch is a new high-throughput mode for Amazon SQS FIFOs. All right, so let's think back to 2004. In late 2004, we launched the first beta of the Amazon Simple Q service, or SQS, we launched it fairly quietly, and I think a lot of people looked at it and said, why in the world would a bookstore be selling message queues? That's okay. We're, we're okay with being misunderstood sometimes at Amazon. But the cool thing is that developers in the know, those who are building distributed systems, they looked at those message queues and said, wow, this is absolutely perfect for connecting the different parts of my distributed system together. Now today, a whole lot of years later, 
SQS is still an important part of AWS and we continue to improve it. Back in 2016, we added the FIFO model, so your messages are processed in first in, first out order. This also guarantees exactly once message delivery without duplicates. It is great for complex transaction processing. So in the news, what we did is we added a new high throughput mode for both your new and your existing FIFO queues. If you enable this mode, you get 10 times the throughput, which means up to 3,000 messages per second per API action. It's available today in all regions, and you can read the what's new to learn more. My final launch for you today is the general availability of Amazon Redshift ML. I really love this because it's going to help you to get more value from your existing data warehouse and your existing data. What it does is it connects your data in Amazon Redshift and Amazon SageMaker. You can use your data warehouse to train your machine learning models. So here's an example of what you could do. Perhaps you've already got customer profile info and account activity. You could very easily build a model that lets you predict customer churn. It's super, super easy to get started with this. You, all you have to do, you write a SQL query and then you create a model from it. Within SageMaker, you get to use SageMaker Autopilot. It's gonna help you to prepare your data. It's gonna select an appropriate built-in algorithm for you. And then it's gonna use that algorithm and your data for training. Once that's all set, you can generate predictions from your existing data. One thing I really love about this, it's accessible if you're brand new to ML, because all you do is you write your simple SQL commands. If you're a data scientist or if you're a machine learning expert, you get to choose your algorithms, you can set your hyperparameters, and you can choose the appropriate preprocessor for your data. Once the, the model is built and the training is done, Prediction is available as a simple SQL function that you can reference in your queries. Cost-wise, you pay only for training, and prediction is actually included in the existing cost of your Redshift cluster. To learn a whole lot more about this really cool feature, you can check out the detailed blog post. And that's all I've got for you this time around. I really hope you enjoyed my story and the three great launches. As I always say, I love your comments and keep them coming. Do my best to read them all, so click through. Hit like, hit subscribe, leave me one of those great comments. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you again soon.